Hey everybody, this is Chris of Christoph Joseph Leather. I want to welcome you to my little leather craft channel here on YouTube. And today I have a demonstration on how to do airbrush dyeing. So I have a customer's project that I'm working on out in the garage and I got to lay down some dye and I said, hey, I need to dra drag the camera out and videotape this because it's just a perfect way to show you guys the, the most optimal way to put down leather dye in such a smooth, um, flawless fashion. Um, it's far superior to doing brushes, foam brushes, daubers, sponges, and all that other stuff, especially on like large flat areas. But um, if you want a nice even dyed finish, it's just, you can't beat it. So especially like, um, you know, you want to do like a transition, you can do like darker and lighter and stuff like that around the edges. You can highlight things and it's just so awesome. So rather than me just talking, I'm going to go out to the garage right now and we're going to fire up the compressor and my airbrush. All right. So I'm getting ready to do a dye job here with my airbrush and a couple of things. Sorry, to, I live next to an airport, so it's kind of noisy around here. That's typical. Why I don't do videos out here in the garage. But anyways, leather dye can be a very, very messy, I'm using rosette uh, by fivings. Makes a really nice medium brown color. But uh, leather dye can be a very, very messy experience. I mean, you gotta wear gloves. So what I'm doing, rather than pour it in there, is I'm using uh, this particular one I use for darker colors. Um, a syringe type of thing so I'll suck up um, a little bit of dye you know what let me use it I'll use a new one okay you can see that but uh, I got my camera stand here Pour it just enough dye in there it's so much easier and this is a Pache airbrush I'm using it's so much better than trying to use a dauber I'll just be straight blunt these things suck I hate them the daubers you know the minute you drop it down it's gonna leave blotches no matter if you try to overlap it you end up getting darker and darker you have so much more control of your color with an airbrush. Um, just provides for such a better final product, more even. And um, oh, there goes the jet. <laughs> so here we go. Quick, and this is a, I use a quick release attachment. So I use one airbrush for colors, and I use one airbrush just for paints. You know, I mean, color dyes is this one. I have another one just for uh, paints, and I have another airbrush that I use just for clear coat only. So there's no contamination whatsoever of dyes. So I just grab it, it's already got a clear coat in it. with the airbrush you can do little fade effects normally I would pick it up here in my hand but so this is uh, laser engraved you see that so the the Bible verse is laser engraved and I'm going around it and now I'm doing a halo effect You'll see it here in a minute. I'm gonna do a halo effect. I kind of went in and cut in already with a brush for my light rays. So now I gotta get in real close and start getting the dark areas of my light rays. Fading those out, fanning them out.
kind of feathering them. Yeah. So those will extend out. You can see what I'm doing here. Now I might come back with a brush. We'll see. I really want these light rays to be smooth transition. to avoid getting overspray on the, the lighter areas so that's why sometimes you have to switch directions so I want to point away from my light areas Yeah, I really like the rosette color that Fibings has. The medium brown and the light brown and the dark brown chocolate, they're just not, they're either too red, you know? So. so sometimes I have to keep going over it because as the leather soaked, dye soaks in it lightens up a little bit so I really want to get those well-defined dark lines going here and there to be the no transition Still trying to make it a little darker darker around the edges so as i fan out you know the piece is getting darker Let's see get that really nice glow effect and now i'm going to kind of even out the back to match what i this color that i have around the border so You couldn't even try to do this with brushes and, and daubers. Forget about it. So, yeah, it's got that nice light. It makes it really pop to have the contrast to lighten it up a little bit and do a glow effect around any kind of laser engraving. That's just kind of my signature thing. So I got a little bit of, it spit out a little heavy right there. So now I kind of have to mask it by going a little darker I think it's starting to look pretty darn where I want it to be then I'll come back in and I'm gonna hand paint this cross with brushes and dyes and then I'll burnish the whole thing and then I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna spray a clear coat on it and you'll have a final product so I usually typically give it a little time to dry because it's gonna lighten up a little bit and I don't want to choke out, you know, the drying process of my leather dye. I want the air to get in there and do its thing, the color, the, you know, do its fading or whatever it's going to do. Let the leather dye dry. So. All right. Okay, we're back at my little airbrush station in the garage here. And I'm getting ready to do a clear coat on this uh, wallet that we airbrushed earlier and let me just grab a little rag and I want to burnish the leather a little bit beforehand you can see
see the uh, die comes off of there. All right. So this is what we're looking at. Can you see that? Okay. So I have my camera off to the side, I apologize for this. Okay, we're gonna turn on my little airbrush compressor. And so I'm gonna detach this one. And usually I'm gonna do that away from my product so I don't spill nothing on there. I've had disasters where, you know, you you uh, have a little spit and it just gets this tiny little spot on there and you're like killing yourself. All right. So now I have a, this is another Pache, the VL series, and this is, my good one's a Talon series. We're doing fine detail work. So I'm using what's called Satin Sheen. So that's Super Sheen. A little too glossy for me sometimes. You know, too shiny looks cheesy. I don't like it. So I like a little satin finish. And there goes my watch. <laughs> I love it. All right, here we go. Let's move this thing out of the way. So, test fire it off to the side before you, you know, go across your product. But it's just, it's so much better. Look at that. Then I'm pulling the trigger and air dry it a little bit. Let it soak in. And I'm gonna hit it one more time. You know, I might come back, you know, usually typically I'll come back with a, a brush and touch up where I need to. Um, and if I have to, I'll put another coat of clear on it. So uh, let's just give it one more dusting here. This stuff dries so fast. I mean, in 20 seconds, it's dry to touch almost. It's acrylic. But there you go. There's today's project. And uh, you can see I got a little bit. Oh, maybe I just blow that out. Got a little bit of something going on in there. Need to darken up a little bit in there. So I still see some brush strokes. And... Uh, you know, I've added a little bit of character to the cross. And now you can see that kind of glowing effect. So, anyways, I'm going to go work on the interior and finish her up.